Here we'll discuss different modes that are available for non-invasive ventilation. And just like on invasive ventilation, different patients will require different modes. Same is true for non-invasive ventilation, that different populations will require different parameters. A CHF patient, for instance, will require a totally different mode of ventilation as opposed to a COPD patient when they're placed on non-invasive ventilation. So we need to target uh, each population with a proper mode whenever we're administering non-invasive ventilation. And another important aspect I want to address here, we have ventilators that are capable of not only providing non-invasive ventilation, they're able to provide invasive ventilation. And we have standalone non-invasive machines only able to serve non-invasive modes. So LTV-1200 ventilator and ICU ventilators and ventilators you may find in the ED uh, emergency department are able to provide invasive modes in addition to non-invasive modes. And standalone non-invasive machines are only capable of providing non-invasive. And the user interface will greatly differ between the two. And the way you adjust these settings or copy them from one ventilator to another would adjust as well. So there's this key distinctions you need to pay attention to when you're transitioning, especially from a standalone non-invasive machine to a ventilator such as LTV-1200 capable of providing invasive ventilation. And then we'll address these aspects uh, one by one in this presentation. So we'll begin this uh, discussion with non-invasive ventilation CPAP or PEEP mode. And CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure and PEEP stands for positive and expiratory pressure. And essentially by convention, they all mean the same thing. It's one set pressure for the entirety of the patient respiratory cycle. It doesn't matter if the patient is breathing in or breathing out during the respiratory cycle, the machine will deliver one set pressure throughout the whole cycle. And to make this really easy to understand, imagine uh, if you came home during a really hot summer night and you turn on your air conditioner full blast and you stick your face and you open your mouth and AC is delivering one set pressure, this is CPAP or PEEP. And they both mean the exact same thing. Verbally explaining uh, these modes, uh, do not do them justice. And I have video clips of showing you exactly what the ventilator does with each mode. And I think visual representation will serve you much better in understanding these different modes. And one final thing uh, regarding CPAP is technically it's not a true mode because it doesn't facilitate supporting a patient's ventilation. And certain textbooks, uh, such as ICU book by Paul Marino and the FCCS book, uh, by Society of Critical Care Medicine, they do not uh, recognize CPAP as a true mode for non-invasive ventilation. But I wanted to put it here because uh, non-invasive ventilation is, as we said, is an umbrella term and it encompasses all non-invasive ventilation. Here we have a graphic representation of CPAP and PEEP. And this was from LTV 1200 manual. And I think it's really good in demonstrating what the mode actually does. So PAW stands for pressure in the airway. And the person setting this ventilator said CPAP or PEEP at 5 centimeters of H2O or 5 centimeters of water pressure. And all those uh, dips in the waveform indicate patient's spontaneous breath. So a patient initiates a negative inspiratory force or NIF, and you see that dip in the waveform. So the this CPAP or PEEP mode facilitates spontaneous breath, but during the entire respiratory cycle, it maintains the circuit pressure at 5 centimeters of water. And I think it's very important to see that on the graphic uh, form. Here, I have an actual video representation of what CPAP and PEEP looks like on LTV-1200 ventilator. So this is your lung, and this is the alveoli. So now I have no PEEP. This is just deflated lung, right? So now I'm going to put a PEEP at 15 to give you a better representation of what it looks like. So now we have pure PEEP on this machine. So this will stand your alveoli open. And what do CPAP and PEEP provide? They provide oxygenation. And oxygenation works by process of diffusion. And it's very simple. It's movement of molecules from high concentration from your alveoli to low concentration uh, in your bloodstream. Thus, the larger surface area, the better you'll be able to oxygenate the patient. So the bigger the real estate of the lungs available, the better the diffusion process uh, will occur. CPAP and PEEP are expiratory maneuvers, and expiratory maneuvers maintain FRC. And FRC stands for uh, functional residual capacity, and they'll have a graphic representation of all the capacities and lung volumes. CPAP does not augment patient's tidal volume in the sense that patient is able to 
take spontaneous breaths on his own effort. However, the ventilator will not assist those breaths in augmenting the tidal volume. Here, I have a graphic representation of lung volumes and capacities. Even though it may look complicated, I assure you it's really not. And I'm going to start at the bottom. And I'm going to address the most pertinent ones to understanding CPAP and PEEP administration. So we have RV, which stands for residual volume. Residual volume is the volume of your lungs that you cannot get rid of on your own effort. So the only way you could get rid of residual volume, for example, if you had a tank uh, go over your thorax and crush your lungs and collapse your alveoli, that's the only way you get rid of residual volume. Above it, we have ERV, which stands for expiratory reserve volume. This volume you can get rid of by your effort. If you take maximum exhalation, uh, you will get rid of expiratory reserve volume. If you combine two of them together, RV plus ERV, you have what is known as functional residual capacity. And capacities indicate summation of lung volumes together. And functional residual capacity is very important to understand in application of CPAP and PEEP because the bigger functional residual capacity that you have, the bigger the real state of the lungs that you have. Thus, more FRC that you have, it will allow more oxygen to come and diffuse through the pores because the surface area you're working with is much bigger and much more conducive to oxygen diffusion. The next mode that we have is BiPAP. And in BiPAP, we set two pressures, one for inhalation and one for exhalation. So whenever a patient initiates a negative inspiratory force, what that basically means is the patient is sucking air in, the ventilator senses that and will deliver pressure support ventilation during inspiration. And when the patient exhales, the ventilator will deliver PEEP or CPAP. So the way pressure support uh, ventilation works is uh, as soon as the patient triggers uh, negative inspiratory force, the ventilator will elevate the circuit pressure to a predetermined set level that the clinician has set for pressure support. And this is, assists patients not only with augmenting their tidal volume, it assists with the work of breathing and it assists with the patient getting rid of uh, carbon dioxide that they had in their lungs. Here is a graphic representation of what BiPAP looks like on the waveform. So uh, PAW stands for pressure in the airway, and the clinician has set it once more at five centimeters of uh, water. So whenever the patient exhales, he will get that five uh, of PEEP or CPAP. And whenever a patient initiates an inhalation by negative inspiratory force, the ventilator senses that and will deliver pressure support ventilation for every patient triggered breath that the patient makes. And that setting is also set by the clinician on the ventilator on the pressure support dial. Pressure support breaths are defined by care fusion as follows. For pressure support breaths, flow is delivered to elevate circuit pressure to the pressure support setting and maintain it at the pressure until the flow drops below a variable percentage of the peak flow. And here I have a video representation of what pressure support and PEEP together looks like on LTV-1200 ventilator. You have a combination. So now we add a PEEP and we, add, and we have pressure support on top of it. So when patient takes a breath or initiates spontaneous ventilation, the ventilator senses that and delivers the breath. But upon exhalation, it doesn't let his alveoli collapse and still maintains. As you saw in the video, pressure support ventilation provide ventilation to the patient. And this is an inspiratory maneuver. And inspiratory maneuvers are maneuvers that recruit functional residual capacity and they promote alveolar recruitment. So they get all the alveoli that were not available prior to it uh, to engage and pop open from their atelectic state or collapse state. PEEP on the other hand provides oxygenation and PEEP is an expiratory maneuver. The expiratory maneuvers, uh, they maintain functional residual capacity and they prevent alveolar collapse or atelectasis and they prevent T recruitment. To make this concept really simple to understand, imagine if I took all your lung tissue, I unfolded it and it took space of an entire basketball court. Now you had a patient who had dependent lung areas such as atelectic lung areas, edematous lung areas, and lung areas uh, with pneumonia that weren't uh, able to participate in gas exchange. So now your basketball court is shrunk because of those dependent lung areas. Your pressure support uh, uh, ventilation is an inspiratory maneuver 
that will recruit those dependent long areas and will try to expand my basketball court to the original uh, position. And once uh, the inspiratory maneuvers, such as pressure support, has recruited those dependent long areas, the PEEP and CPAP kicks in and it maintains those areas from collapsing and becoming atelectatic or edematous again. So pressure support and PEEP work in tandem to uh, recruit uh, alveoli and PEEP to maintain uh, the alveoli once it has been recruited. Here's an excellent video I found on YouTube. This is from Dr. Slotsky uh, video presentation from Toronto and he utilizes a rabbit lung to demonstrate uh, lung recruitment and they show um, initially ZEEP which is zero and expiratory pressure and they go all the way up to 15 of PEEP and they clearly demonstrate um, lung recruitment and lung derecruitment as it occurs with different levels of PEEP. Okay, the recording again, this is a different angle. Down shot, zip. And we're going to go to 15 of PEEP now. Okay, complete recruitment. And back to zip. As you can see, some of the some of the uh, portions are collapsed still, even at the peak inspiration. One other important issue, as far as the terms are concerned, I want to address here. Whenever utilizing a, a ventilator or LTV 1200 and a standalone machine, the terms that they employ in the interface are slightly different. They need to understand what they all mean. So to deliver non-invasive ventilation, uh, a ventilator that has invasive modes as well as LTV 1200 will utilize the terms pressure support ventilation over PEEP. And to deliver non-invasive ventilation, the standalone machine, such as BiPAP Vision by Respironics or any other machine for that matter, will use the term IPAP and EPAP. Uh, pressure support on the ventilator, uh, it delivers ventilatory assistance and it's the same as IPAP on a standalone machine. IPAP stands for inspiratory positive airway pressure and they both mean the exact same thing. Pressure support ventilation and IPAP both deliver ventilation towards the patient. Uh, PEEP and CPAP on the ventilator is like EPAP on a standalone machine. EPAP stands for expiratory positive airway pressure and they both deliver oxygenation to the patient. So PEEP and CPAP uh, is the exact same thing as EPAP on a standalone machine. Uh, and to sum all the things we discussed here is PEEP, CPAP and EPAP all mean the exact same thing. This is said based on patient oxygenation needs. Usually, uh, the clinician uh, in the facility will start this therapy at 5 centimeters of water pressure and uh, titrate based on patient presentation and how the patient is tolerating the settings. Pressure support ventilation is the same thing as IPAP. This setting is used for ventilation and again is initiated at 5 centimeters of water and adjusted on patient needs. Pressure support ventilation and PEEP are the terms for the ventilator. So if you have a hospital invasive capable ventilator or LTV 1200, uh, usually BiPAP will be set using pressure support ventilation over PEEP. And if you have a standalone machine such as BiPAP Vision by Respironics, the terms for BiPAP will be uh, inspiratory positive airway pressure over expiratory positive airway pressure. And they all uh, encompass the same exact uh, modes. And uh, it's just different terminology has to be employed for different devices um, as the manufacturer entailed uh, them to be. And here I have a video of showing you all the modes um, one by one that we discussed up to this point in this presentation. All right, so here we have pure PEEP, right? Positive and expiratory pressure without any uh, pressure support. This is uh, 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 synonymous with CPAP. 
So now we'll take the same mode and we add uh, uh, pressure support. We're gonna again add 15 to make it continuous. So here it's pressure support on top of people, right? So as you see, when the patient initiates a spontaneous breath, the machine assistance assists the patients with providing him with the spontaneous breath assistance. And when it uh, deflates, the people are still there. So now we have uh, pressure support with people. Now we're going to take away people fully. So now we have pure pressure support, no people. So patient initiates a spontaneous breath. The ventilator delivers it, but there's no people to stand the alveoli open. So uh, this is pure pressure support without any people. So uh, you saw all the three modes uh, represented here.